being on a film set is like different, but being on a film set with Steven Soderbergh is different. Well, thanks everybody. I have some group questions. I have some individual questions. We'll have some fun. It'll be a good time. Um, Lucy, I wanted to start. What made you want to sign on to this exciting project? Well, I think when Steven Soderbergh uh, calls you and says he wants to have a meeting, you show up. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Um, and uh, he sort of talk, talked me through the script um, and it sounded so fascinating. Um, and then I mean, it really wasn't rocket science for me to sign on, even though I didn't really know much about it. I hadn't read the script yet. Um, I hadn't met the cast, you know, sort of, it was sort of very, very beginning of what was going to become the presence. Um, and then we got to work together, which was fantastic. And, and he works in such a specific manner that um, it made it really exciting because it's something that I've never done before. Awesome. Um, Julie, kind of building off of that, what was he like as a director that you hadn't maybe experienced before? Just how efficient he is. Mm -hmm. Like he gets the shot in two takes. Um, and I think he really creates an environment where you feel really comfortable, uh, comfortable enough to surrender to the situation. And, um, and I love those kinds of environments where anything is welcome. You can improvise, you can, Change that he really he takes your how you feel and your judgment and your suggestions into consideration. He respects us all as artists and visionaries, and it's very much a collaborative effort. and And I love that. I hate sets that feel like there's like a dictator, like and everyone's afraid. And I, I don't like that at all. And he's the opposite of that. That's awesome, mm -hmm. um, Chris. So this is a movie about family. You just happen to be on one of the biggest shows of all time about family <laughs> dynamics. What about family stories do you think resonates with audiences so much? Um, I think we all we all turn to um, art to have our our lives and our emotions reflected back to us in one way or another. Maybe to kind of sort through our own feelings to see if we can recognize something in a character or a relationship that applies to us that maybe we can apply to ourselves. Um, and so I think, you know, the, the, the family dynamic um, is, is timeless when it comes to especially film and television and ghosts. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves ghosts. <laughs> totally. Um, Kalina, so I know you've had television work, but this is your first feature film, correct? Second. Oh, second. I apologize. How um, dare you, Bill? I'm so sorry. It, I'm so sorry. Um, okay. What would you say is the biggest difference between your television work and feature work in terms of, you know, I know you've been on big shows and what, what do you feel like is the biggest difference being on a film set? I mean, being on a film set is like different, but being on a film set with Steven Soderbergh is different. Like, he works in such a specific, magical way. Like, he really has this genius mind. And it's so, I, I was really grateful to be there and to see the way he works and to experience all these scene, scenes with these amazing actors. And it just felt like a very magical environment where we could like create art and live and experience these moments. Um, yeah, it was very different, but in the best way possible. Um, Eddie, I'm a little nervous about my IMDb research now, but I believe this is your first big project. This correct? is my first professional project. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got right. you got okay. That. Um, what was that like? Uh, you know, how did you process getting the feeling like, okay, my first big project is with Steven Soderbergh, all these, you know, industry legends. Like, yeah. how did you process that when you got the call that you're in? I, it definitely took me a little bit to process, especially once I learned like, who else was going to be on it? Like Lucy and Chris and Kalina and Julia and West. Like it was very much, I felt like I was going into it as like the rookie. Um, and I think it's just a testament to like how comfortable of a space like Lucy and Chris made every day on set, just like making us feel like a family and making you feel comfortable to try things and fail. And also Steven as a director, he's just, he really trusts you to bring in what you want to the work. Um, and so it, it really, after a few days, it just felt natural. 
Awesome. Cool. Um, West, I know we saw you last year in Dark Harvest. You've done all kinds of different genres of work. What about horror is different to you as an actor? Like, what's your process like going like, okay, there's some spooky stuff afoot. I need to convey that. How does that work for you? Uh, for me, how I kind of get into like uh, a spooky, really, it's, it's, I think it's the environment surrounding me. Um, whenever I walk onto set, like, being whether it's in the cornfields in uh, Dark Harvest and having like the moon out and it's like big and orange and, and, and then you have the practical monster to something like Presence where you have um, different elements, you know, kind of happening in the room um, and, uh, and, and different like camera angles. And, uh, and it, was, it was really, really like such an incredible, I don't know, different, it's, it's such a different vibe on set. It's like you, you sort of have to lean into the ghost stories that you would hear when you're younger. You have to lean into what your character, it's like weird things are happening around, um, whether on camera or off camera, as uh, we've had a few experiences. But uh, uh, it's, uh, um, you kind of just have to lean into the, to the spooky side of that. And, and that's when everything really kind of comes to life. Gotcha. Well, I have to, that leads me to my next question of all of you. Who has seen a ghost or a presence? And do you have any wonderful stories about that? Should we all just raise your, raise your hand? <laughs> we've, all, yeah. we've all seen a ghost. <laughs> Who would like to share a spooky real life story that they've encountered? I think your story is No, true. please, come on. Yeah. This happened. This happened, no, your yes. this happened yeah. while we were yeah. shooting. Okay, yeah. okay. This then, happened... we to, then we need to hear yeah. it. Yeah. And it involves like these yeah. two, but basically we were staying in this hotel and it was next to an old people's home. And it was while we were filming and I heard, so we had rooms like right next to each other and I heard like knocks on my wall and I messaged him and I was like, are you in? And he was like, no, I'm not. And I was like, this is, this is so great. And then <laughs> next morning my alarm would go off, like the hotel alarms was really jarring. I didn't touch that alarm ever. Toilet would like flush without me pressing it. it and I was scared at first, but then I, I started like talking to the presence mm -hmm. and saying like, let's just coexist. And, and then they relaxed until them two started pranking me. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking on my door. Never tell your co-stars. Yeah, because you were set up. <laughs> I think, my, I think my hotel room is haunted. Don't ever tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell yeah. anyone. What did, what did Steven think of that? Did you give him the rundown? I don't think I ever told Did I tell him? I don't think so. I don't think I told him. I we'll gotta tell out. him. Yeah. So Where is he? Pretty excited. He'd be like, "Oh, well, that's okay." Yeah. Not a lot of time for chit chat <laughs> on a Soderbergh set. <laughs> of course. Straight yeah. to the point. <laughs> Hard work. You have to tell him your story, though. Oh. No, your story is like crazy. Not please. Now. <laughs> the year was 1999. <laughs> no, I, it, that was good enough. That's good enough. You're not gonna go through all our ghost stories, are you, Bill? Do you want to hear my ghost I story? Mean, it just seems like people are very excited. I'm excited to hear it. I love ghost stories. I've seen some, so you know. A friend of mine had a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere that he grew up in that was haunted. So a group of us, one, <laughs> one year for spring break, instead of going to Cancun or Miami like a normal college student, we gathered a group and went to this farmhouse to, to see <laughs> ghosts. And uh, instantly there was activity. Activity the entire weekend, but on the final day, we all sat quietly in the living room and tried to focus our energy just to see what we could experience. Across the room from me was a stairwell, pitch black in this house. House is in the middle of nowhere. Can't see your hand in front of your face. I could see a little sliver of a window at the top of the stairs where the moon was coming in, sitting there. Everyone's very quiet. And all of a sudden, something moves in front of the window and blocks out the light. I stiffen. Then it moves out from in front of the window and moves down the stairs. And I just kind of follow it in the dark. And as I'm following it, I follow it into the dining room and three people on the other side of the room scream, turn on all the lights and explain how something has just walked behind them Whoa. into the dining room. Oh my God. Crazy. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. I have to go. <laughs> um, that's tough to follow, but um, Julia, I wanted to ask you, you know, you iconically were Josh Safdie's muse for Uncut Gems. They, it seems like him and his brother are kind of developing different projects these days. Have you talked to him about working together in the future at all? Uh, not really. I haven't talked to him, but we, we do talk. And sure. He, yeah, he just had a baby and then he's taking off and acting and he's doing amazing. And I think it was just kind of like a natural 
progression, you yeah. know? They're just on different paths, but it's still like love, you know? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lucy, I, everyone asked me when I was talking to you, now that Cameron Diaz has unretired, Charlie's Angels 3, could it happen? Oh my God. Has there please. been any chatter? We need it. You and Cameron. <laughs> 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 okay, Drew can, can do, you do it. The split? Drew. Yes. <laughs> I t I mean, I honestly don't know how that's going to be feasible. Um, there have been so many iterations, even after the fact. Um, but none were as could compare to that's your right. iteration. That's I mean, that's, right. it was that's the iconic. Iteration. I know, but in iteration. some ways, it's it's such a strange thing to to think about it because. Times have changed so much since, since then. I mean, mm. at that time when we were doing publicity, they had never before had three women on a magazine cover. They didn't even know how to do it, you know? So it was such a strange thing for, for women to mm. collaborate and be seen as, as, as colleagues and friends. And, you know, I think it was such a, it was such a big moment in time and now it's shifted. I mean, things, even when I was doing Ally McBeal, they'd never been a lead woman, woman, you know, in that w in that way. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there was Mary Tyler Moore and things like that, but really, the focus has changed. And I don't know, I, I'm not, you know, in charge of that. But I always enjoy the time that I had, and then I just I move on. I never really dwell on anything like that. But I I really would be shocked mm -hmm. if that if that happened. Um, cool. And then the last question I have for everybody. So we're partnered with Audible. There are good friends working in the studio with us. So I have a question about audio storytelling, and I'll just get it out for you. Um, so it's the 40th anniversary of Sundance this year. Over the 40, past 40 years, we've seen an expansion of storytelling through new mediums. With formats and distribution platforms still evolving, do any of you have any interesting ideas about the future of audio storytelling? I know it's kind of a big question, and well, podcasts are really doing well nowadays. I love audio storytelling. VR is going to be a thing, too. If you, like, put audio into, like, a VR headset, that would be cool. So headphones. Yeah, but then you can <laughs> see it, too. Like, but then that's animation. Yeah. That I is think as, as the pendulum swings with the length of the attention span of an audience, you know, the, the attention span of an audience has gotten very short, very quick, mm -hmm. quick beats, swiping, shorts, you know, uh, um, little 10 second stories or whatever the thing is. I think the long format story is, is I think, like Julie was saying, the, the, the podcast being so popular indicates that the long format interview, the long format story is something that people are, are interested in um, investing their time in. I love audiobooks, mm -hmm. frankly, just because when you have a family, you know, and you're, you really don't have as much time to read, yeah. you know, a book. So when you're preparing or doing something, you can actually listen to a book and feel like you're activated and then you can sit down and read it. If you have the book, I do both. Um, but it's, it feels like I can accomplish something mm -hmm. and feel like I'm, you know, kind of really still part of the zeitgeist of reading and, and what's going on. Something I like to do um, while I read or, or listen to audiobooks is is um, I'm always I'm very like musically I, I I love to like put on different songs and and create soundtracks for different books. Oh, that's so, cool. um, hmm. so if there was like I don't know some way to combine listening to an audiobook and implementing like your own music oh, or okay. that like audiobook comes with a set of like a soundtrack because I think that's something like that's so double, apparent in, in right, our industry layers, of the is like the soundtrack and the music. Yeah, um, yeah. So if we could combine those elements somehow. I'd when I when I had to read the Iliad in high school, <laughs> I, I read it. I had to read it out loud to myself to the River Dance soundtrack. What? <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, exactly, probably exactly the same thing. It's the only way I could get through it. My attention span. That's how Imagine you conjured that ghost. A, a sixteen-year-old boy <laughs> alone in his room reading the <laughs> Iliad out loud to himself while Michael I'm Flatley you actually tick, tick, doing ticking. the River Dance. Yeah. Listen, That's do what hilarious. you gotta do. <laughs>